welcome to our third part of the Elky Summer, Summer of Fun. This episode is Zeppelin 1971, an action-adventure movie. In this movie, I think we see Elky at the top of her game. She plays a more serious role and extends her acting talents. Gone is the playful sex cousin of certain other movies. And in its place is a serious actress plying her craft quite well. Also in this movie is Michael York in one of his best roles. He plays an English spy who convinces the Germans that he's went over to their side. They're quite trusting, especially the professor in charge of designing and building the airship, who had known him previously. Michael York also strikes up a friendship with the radio man of the Zeppelin, and they get along quite well until Michael York has to murder him. I think he quite well plays the role of the British guy who's friendly and you would never think would harm a fly, but in actuality is quite capable of murder. So, the Germans have hatched a plan to end the war in 1915. To do this, they're going to make a trip to Scotland and get some valuables that the British have hidden in a Scottish castle. A bit of a harebrained scheme, perhaps, but if it had worked, it would have been really nice if World War I had ended in 1915. If Germans were able to make peace through the Zeppelin raid, it would have probably saved millions of lives. Good point, Cub. That was Cub from the Lone Wolf Cub channel, which some of you might know that I visit there sometimes to do podcasts with him. When you look at the losses over the next three years of war, plus the pandemic that came out of it that killed so many people, and the three great dictators and the Cold War that came about later, if all that could have been avoided by uh, a peace in 1915, I think that would have been much preferable to the terrible and bloody century that was about to transpire. I thought the practical effects were especially good for a movie in 1971. The sets were fantastic, the models looked great. You can see Elkie here with Michael York, and they played quite well off of each other. On a personal note, growing up in Houston, there was a Goodyear blimp base just north of here, and it would track right across the house. And it was somewhat awesome to see this giant airship coming out of the mist, just as you saw earlier on this clip. There's something majestic about them. And unless you've seen one passing right over you, it's hard to describe. Of course, the Zeppelins were used for a terrible purpose. Bombing cities and whatnot. The, really, the first such raids were conducted by them, and the British had to fight them off. In 1915, they had the problem of airplanes that wouldn't go to that ceiling, and they had just come up with the new plane that could but the bullets were just passing through, so they had to come up with something that would deal with it. Maybe set it on fire. They came up with tracer rounds. After some initial problems with the technology, they did get it to work, and they were able to hold off the Zeppelin attack. Overall, I would rate this as one of the top movies of the year 1971, and perhaps of the entire decade. It was a action adventure romp. Let's see what Kathy has to say about it. Well acted and interesting. Well, I would agree with that, Kathy. The acting across the board was first rate. And the cat and mouse game that Michael York plays with the Germans on the Zeppelin is also interesting. The movie was directed by Etienne Perrier, and he did a first-rate job on it. It was one of the first movies I can remember that 
didn't depict the Germans as cardboard cutout bad guys. They were actual people, they had their little plan, they were serving their country and doing the best they could. They were even noble and self-sacrificing. It was a different kind of movie than what had been made up until that point, at least in America and perhaps Britain, concerning, you know, World War I and II and the German. As Cub says, the Germans are not all sprinkles and unicorns, but at the same time, they don't have to be portrayed as ridiculous caricatures of themselves. Overall, I think I would give this movie five exploding zeppelins out of five. Writing, directing, acting, it was all first rate. The special effects were first rate. It was a classy movie. It was made late enough to have great cinematography, but early enough so it's not hampered by modern politics and terrible writing. I believe if you give it a chance, you'll enjoy it. That's not a Gorn, but you might be if you don't like it and subscribe. <laughs>